Happy Easter, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the long weekend from the stock market, but we have uh, some pretty good opportunities brewing in the market this week, and we have a lot of important things to cover. The stock market has been uptrending for five months straight at this point, and this is only the second time this has happened in over 25 years. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, at the same time, we're seeing gold and precious metals move in ways that they haven't in a long time. Central banks have been buying this a whole lot lately, so of course we're going to cover that as well. We have another Powell speech this week, and as usual, we're, we're going to cover some good setups and some interesting stocks to pay attention to for the week. So stick with us until the end, and Tom, let's jump right into it. Yeah, overall last week, the stock market did pretty well, I'd say. You know, it was pretty choppy, but there was a lot of good up and down price action. There was actually a lot of great opportunities, both to the downside earlier in the week and then to the upside as the week ended. And SPY actually made new all-time highs on Friday, hitting up around like 524.60. That's going to be a big thing to watch this week. Are we going to continue to push up above that high or are we going to hit this big resistance and fall a little bit lower? It looks like on Friday that resistance definitely held up a little bit, but if it ends up breaking above that this week, we might start to see more all-time highs, Mike. And the market has not been slowing down at all lately. And, uh, man, we keep talking about these streaks. And yet again, there's another cool stat here with the S&P 500. Exactly. So again, the stock market has been uptrending for five months straight. Uh, the only other time we've seen this recently was back in 2013. But generally speaking, to see a uptrend this powerful that lasts this long is pretty rare. Uh, there was one other instance back in like 1997 or so. But, you know, again, seeing the market move the way we have been seeing it move is very rare. And it just goes to show you how strong the market is right now. And, you know, like you said, Tom, there have been so many records broken over the past couple of weeks and months, whether it's, you know, this new recent record with, uh, you know, a five month uptrend or even other streaks you can say with the stock market not having any major pullback by 1% or 2% in quite a while. So uh, while that's all, you know, fine and dandy, the market has been slowing down a little bit as well. As you can look back, the market has been, of course, uptrending quite a bit, but what we can see from this past week is sure, yes, it made new all time highs, but it's not like the stock market necessarily closed in a super strong way either. That uh, end of day price action with SPY was a little bit nasty. And I think what it goes to show is that as you look at some of these big powerhouse stocks across the market, whether it's Meta, Netflix, Nvidia, or any other stock lately, um, those stocks are slowing down a little bit. And I think that is worth noting because in the past, when we would see the market rip to new all-time highs, it was like, you know, led by powerhouse stocks like NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is not at all-time highs right now. Actually, the highest it's been was uh, back on March 7th. So it goes to show you that things are changing just a little bit. And I think there's a... Uh I think it's going to be very smart for people to start to adapt pretty quickly. And I hope you stay and watch to the end of today's video to see what we mean. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of awesome plays here coming up too, so make sure you stick around for those. But the overall market right now has been going and just marching higher and higher and higher, and it's a good point to look at these tech stocks like this. And on Friday, like you said, the SPY hit an all-time high, and then the heat map was actually really lackluster when you look at it. Of course, energy did good. You know, we saw metals do okay. The financial sector has been great lately. I don't know what's up with banks, Mike, but they have been ripping to highs or at least recent highs in a lot of cases at well as well. But uh, the tech stocks are definitely slowing down. Like, look at that heat map. Meta was in the red. Microsoft was down. Netflix was down. Apple's down. Tesla's down. NVIDIA was barely in the green. They got lucky they uh, came back there or else they would have been red too. But uh, it just goes to show you that the tech sector is definitely starting to slow a little bit. And you can see that on the charts. Like if we switch over to the banks, you can still see that strength there. But like NVIDIA, Netflix, even Tesla right now, very negative on the price action in the short term. No doubt. And those who adapt will make a whole lot of money from it. And those who don't will pay the price. But uh, as you look at the market right now, another area that's seeing a lot of uh, inflows is actually with precious metals and especially gold. 
Gold prices have been ripping to uh, new all-time highs, and that's been awesome to see. And it has been dragging up ETFs like GLD and even individual gold mining companies like GOLD, NEM, and others. So it's like you can't ignore this rally with gold as it's uh, you know ripping past record highs. You definitely can't, Mike. And you know, we've been mentioning gold a ton over the past few months, and we've actually seen a lot of great big money plays lately as well, like on GOLD, GDX, and a couple others. I was looking into it, like the GDX play was up around like f uh, 40 to 50 percent at highs. We have GOLD running up in a big way too. Uh, these stocks have been doing great, and like, look at where the big money's been entering here. Like this GDX entry was awesome down here. It was actually before this little range started, and it was up in the green for pretty much the entire trade uh, with GOLD or Barrick Gold, which is another, or a gold miner, I guess we'll say. Uh, they're actually uptrending too out of that recent channel in such a great way. And one of the big money plays entered in the channel. One of them actually entered before the channel. So we've been seeing a lot of good entries on these big money plays with Gold Mike. And with them starting to rip out of the channel, especially these miners, it's really a good opportunity here. Like we're seeing GLD hit all-time highs, but a lot of these miners are nowhere near their all-time highs and could see some pretty substantial short-term growth and like let's say gold itself actually pulls back Oh, the overall gold prices are still pretty damn high, so these miners will still benefit from that. Exactly. So, yeah, great point there. And like you said, we've been talking about these mining-related stocks a whole lot lately, whether it is GDX, GLD, whether it is GOLD, or NEM, or even XME. A lot of these were big money trades that we talked about, and I know a lot of people got into them and are doing pretty good. So that makes me super happy to hear, and I'm still looking at the, these mining-related stocks in a pretty close way to the upside because they're seeing some of the strongest and most consistent inflows right now across the whole market. You look at big tech stocks right now and they're not falling off the face of the earth by any means, but they surely don't have anywhere near the level of momentum that they used to have a couple weeks ago. And that's fine too. That's fine too. Like you can't just keep a giant uptrend rolling on forever. Sometimes you will have pullbacks. Yeah, you definitely will. And looking at like NVIDIA right now, this pullback that's coming in isn't too surprising either. You know, it's bouncing right off resistance. A lot of times when we see these big resistances, they might end up holding up as a double top in the short term. And we'll have to see if NVIDIA can start to base off support and come back a little bit. But I don't know, Mike, I'm not liking this short term price action. I have a feeling there's going to be some profits being taken up here. And we'll see if uh, the short term support starts giving out. But I'm really watching 891 and 890 in the short term with NVIDIA here. If this does give out, we could see a lot more downside pressure, but you just cannot pass up the opportunity on the metals right now, you know? And keep in mind, guys, these metals are used in a lot of this tech as well. Like NVIDIA actually uses a ton of gold and silver in their products, and so does a lot of other electronics. All right, sounds good. Well, Tom, we can't forget about uh, Powell's speech either for the week. What's going on there? Yeah, the man, the myth, the legend is set to speak on a Wednesday at 12.10 p.m. Eastern Time. A bit of a weird time because it's at a Stanford event, so keep that in mind. Uh, he's going to be giving like an economic outlook there. It's set on the Federal Reserve website, so definitely watch Wednesday at 12.10 p.m. Anytime he speaks, there can be some big movement out there. And then we even have some ISM manufacturing PMI Monday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, Jolt's job openings at 10 a.m. Eastern Tuesday, and then ISM services at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, non-farm payrolls and the, and the unemployment rate Friday too. So there's actually quite a, I would say, quite a good mix of economic data this week. We could expect some pretty good moves there around market open on almost all these days. Perfect. And then, uh, unfortunately, this week's uh, earnings schedule isn't all that, but what do we have? <laughs> yeah, this one's pretty rough. I'll say the only real thing that I'm seeing on here, Mike, is like Dave and Buster's and Blackberry, maybe Levi's, uh, ConAgra Foods. But as you guys can see, it's a pretty empty earnings week. Obviously, though, earnings will be picking back up here over the next few weeks, maybe over the next month. Yeah, so if you're an earnings trader, just uh, take take a vacation this week. It's your it's your week <laughs> off. It, there's nothing like this is probably the most dead earnings week I've seen, and I don't know, Tom. It's got to be at least a couple months. 
Yeah, exactly. There's been so many good moves, though, too. Like, the earnings have been pretty uh, fun lately. You know, we've seen a lot of good moves up, a lot of good moves down, but this week's just nothing. I I'm just going to keep my eyes on gold, Mike. I know gold can't really have earnings, but I'll just pretend they are this week. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, well, let's start to get into some setups and predictions for tomorrow. Speaking of gold, uh, I'm still watching GDX to the upside. I talked about this one on Wednesday last week. Yeah, because Thursday was the last trading day, and it had a great move up on Thursday. I'm still watching it to the upside. The uptrend has been strong, and while this stock doesn't have giant 10% swings on a daily basis, it normally has good moves over the course of a couple of days. So I'm watching it to the upside over the next couple of days, and uh, it'll be uh, close to the top of my watch list. Yeah, it's awesome to see GDX breaking out of this recent channel and, you know, with all the good positivity with gold, how could we not continue to look at it? Mike, I don't know how many times you've mentioned gold over the past couple months, but I feel like it's got to be like 30 times or something. <laughs> like, it's definitely a lot, and gold's been popping off. So, guys, take advantage of the gold right now. With my next play, it is not gold, Mike, especially for Tesla. <laughs> uh, poor Tesla here. They've been beaten down a lot lately, and they actually just started falling back under this 180 resistance slash support. It's pretty much a big area I've been watching a lot. And last week, it had a lot of consolidation around here fell back under. So I'm going to watch for a move under 175 tomorrow. And 175 is a big short-term support. You can see a hit there last week as well. But if we switch over to the book map, it is major on the book map down here. On Friday, or I should say on Thursday, there was 175,000 shares stacked up at that key support. So keep watching 175. It's going to be an important level. If we break under there, I will look for more bearishness out of Tesla since it rejected at 180. That 180 level is huge on book map too so if it does go up use that as resistance sounds good another stock i'm watching pretty closely for tomorrow is netflix and it's to the downside so i talked about this one in a bearish way in wednesday night's video it fell nice on thursday but i could see it falling even more uh the most important level for this stock is at 600 support this is a very strong level and it will be a little bit tough to break through this but as long as we do see a break through $600. I'll definitely continue to watch this one in a bearish way. And this one normally has some pretty good moves. So I'm going to keep a close eye on it. Yeah, I really like that support, Mike. And it's even setting up, you know, for all of our, uh, I guess we would say like setup or candlestick traders out there. It's almost like a descending wedge or like, you know, some type of like downwards flag right here. So definitely watch this in the short term. I think if 600 breaks, that could be a fantastic opportunity for next week. And with these tech stocks starting to fall, I would not be surprised. With my next play, I'm actually looking at another stock I was watching last week, which is Ford. They actually continued up very well Friday, broke out above 1310. And or I should say Thursday, and then they're running up. I keep getting confused, Mike, with uh, <laughs> with the short weeks, right? But uh, I'm really watching this 1330 double top here on Ford in the short term. Uh, the daily looks good. They're actually starting to break out in a pretty good way. So let's go. Let's see some nice movement to the upside. And we even had a big money play on Ford back on February 22nd, which is actually looking really good right now, considering where they entered. Love to see it. All right, well, it's now about that time for today's Momentum Plays. And with the first one, we have FCX to the upside. FCX, Mike, we have not talked about FCX in quite a while, but looking at this stock for tomorrow, I'll look for it to break above 47.22, just above that high of day Friday. Yeah, it's been moving nicely with the metals. So good stuff there. Uh, we are also watching Meta, and this one is to the downside. M-E-T-A, that was a rough move last week, Mike. I mean, look at those consistent downwards moves there on Meta. That is pretty bad. If they fall under 485, go ahead and look for a continuation. There we go. And then with the last one, we have Coinbase for both directions. Coin was pretty wild last week, too. It tried to run up, actually, on Thursday. But if it breaks above 270.20, then go ahead and eye up calls. Now, if it pulls back under 260, then eye up puts. All right, perfect. So we are watching these three stocks for potential day trades tomorrow. Basically, for the upside ones, we want to see a breakthrough of resistance. And for the downside ones, we want to see uh, a break below support. So keep a close eye on these three stocks for tomorrow. They are setups only if they break through the levels Tom listed. But now it's time to dive deep into today's $1.9 million big money trade of the day. 
and we are looking at ticker symbol GH. So this is a uh, another, I guess you could say, biotech company. Uh, these stocks are super volatile, and uh, they move a ton based off FDA drug approvals and just breakthroughs and um, developments with the treatments that they create. Uh, these stocks are volatile in both directions, and on Thursday, we saw the big money put $1.9 million dollars into the GH 20 strike call options that expire on April 19th of 2024. The call options expire relatively soon, I would say. They are in the money. The stock had a pretty nice move on Thursday as well as it popped up by 15%, which is awesome to see. And overall, I mean, the setup definitely doesn't look bad. I will say it's definitely higher risk than most setups, but it's uh, pretty tempting. It really is, Mike. And, you know, with these healthcare stocks, you never know. And with it starting to pop off in the short term, I could see it moving up. Like in the past, like when this stock has had decent moves, it's had some pretty good continuations over the next couple weeks and couple months. So I'll definitely have to watch this one. I mean, look at some of these uptrends. Those are pretty insane, like almost hitting 100% in some cases, if not even higher on these slight moves back. So I like it quite a bit, Mike. It's a shorter term expiration, a lot of money in it. So let's see what, what can be done with this one. It's even starting to break short-term resistance around like $20.50. So uh, it's looking good. Let's see how GH does. I don't know what's up, Mike, with the, all these big money plays on these uh, biopharma slash like <laughs> healthcare stocks, but uh, people need, or the SEC needs to worry more about them than they do Elon, I think. I know, right? So yeah, keep a close eye on this one going forward. These stocks are uh, pretty crazy. And then when you couple that with a, uh, we'll call it, an interesting $1.9 million trade to go along with this move. It definitely catches my attention. So either way, good stuff there. But Tom, let's give a giant shout out to today's member of the day. And that is Jester in the stocked up trading floor. Uh, you could see on Friday, he, uh, he did pretty well with ticker symbol MSTR. You can see he started out the day pretty quickly by saying, uh, made my profit for the day, but then he came back again. He said, final play of the day, one more scalp on MSTR, and I'm done for sure. <laughs> so there <laughs> we go. Awesome job there, and huge shout out to you, Jester. You're still super new to the chat, but keep up all of the great work. And for those of you who are into short-term trading, if you haven't already tried the Stocked Up Trading Floor out yet, uh, definitely check out that first link in the description in the comments down below. Uh, we have everything you could possibly need from short-term trading. Uh, you get full access to our army of trading bots. You can chat with Tom and myself all day long. You get access to these multi-million dollar big money trades every single day before the market closes. And our live events, you get everything. It is the place to be if you're into short-term trading. We very rarely do sales, and we just started one recently. So use coupon code Big Money for the yearly plan to save. The big money trades have been going insane lately. One of the craziest ones recently was uh, with BZ and the 15 strike call options, and those popped up by over 500%. So again, check out that first link in the description in the comments down below. You save a lot with the deal, and we don't do sales like this too often. Besides that, Tom, do you have any other final thoughts for the week, or is there anything else you are watching? Just keep going up gold. You know, that's one of the big <laughs> things in the short term, right? I mean, it's it's doing great. We're seeing good moves up. Even like on Thursday night, heading into Friday, gold was still popping up. So let's see how we can do this week. Uh, there's a lot of good plays out there. I even like Tesla to the downside quite a bit. I like the GDX and Netflix plays. Ford's popping off. So a lot of these stocks that we've been looking at a lot lately, Mike, have been having some really good moves. So guys, take advantage of these in the short term. Be careful of the pullbacks. You know, NVIDIA, a lot of the big tech stocks have been looking a little bit weak lately. So just keep that in the back of your minds. Of course, the market keeps pushing higher, but just be ready. There's a bit of a double top happening at this 524 area. So until that breaks, just be careful going too bullish here on Monday. Sounds good. And no matter what happens, let's stay adaptable, follow the money, keep our risk in check, and let's have a great week this week. Whether the market moves up, down, whether tech stocks are the star of the show, or whether it's gold stocks, oil stocks, or whatever the case may be, uh, again, keep our risk. let's keep our risk in check, follow the money, and stay adaptable. That's the most important thing. And then Again, if you are not already in the stocked up trading floor, uh, if you've been wanting to join, now's the time to do it. We just started this sale. Coupon code big money to save big with the yearly plan. Besides that, thank you all so much for watching and let's crush it this week.